So this is just a how-to video for changing your front discs and pads on your Mark 7 Transit. This particular model is a rear-wheel drive version. So it is essentially the same for a front-wheel drive Transit. You just don't have a stub axle, you have a CV joint that goes through the hub. Step one was to remove the wheel. So this is a 21 mm uh, nut to remove the wheel. So then we've taken off the split pin here, which we just use a set of side cutters and remove the split pin cover. Next is to remove the center nut, so that's a 36 mil. Now you push out the stub axle, as you can see here, and put that to one side, then there's a washer. Next you turn it on full lock, and you'll need a, as you'll see here, hopefully I'll show you in a minute. Oh, what I like to do here is I like to pry the pads against the piston slightly, loosens the caliper, makes it a lot easier. Um, it saves you a bit of time. So take a socket, which I think is a 15 mil, put it onto a nice ratchet and crack that lower bolt off. I use a screwdriver there just to wedge it and stop it spinning on the internal collar there. Let me use a pry bar, lever it off and it slides off on the top pin as you can see. Now. Good practice is to use a bungee cable here just to hook it up onto your spring. However, we're actually going to be changing the flexes in another video, so that's not too essential. You can see we prize the pads out, and this is only on one side on the front has a wear sensor, so we've disconnected that. Next, we use an 18 mil here on the carrier bolts. So we use a nice bar here, as you can see. I think I had a bit of trouble with the top one, if I remember correctly. It was slightly rounded. Yeah, as you can see, it's rounded. So if this ever happens to you, just use a really good socket and hammer it over there. In this case, I believe I used a snap-on FDX socket. Um, they're fantastic. They really are. Uh, these bolts did get replaced at a later date. And you can see it was very tight, probably over tight as well. So that's both the carrier bolts removed now. They removed the carrier. Next, we just turn it straight again here. Next is going to be removing the disc. Now, to remove the disc, you need to remove the hub, which is the bearing as well. So we use a T50 long spline socket here. This goes through five holes on the hub that I've pointed out here. And behind it is a, a capped nut. Now, you get a capped bolt, sorry. You get these new when you buy um, a wheel bearing kit. And I actually replaced the wheel bearing on both fronts of this so um, I wasn't too worried about these. A good practice is to give them a good hammer first and crack them with a bar as you can see here so I'll work my way around all five of those there. Good tap just make sure it gets any of the rust deposits out that always seem to build up there. It's, a, it's quite a bad design if I'm being completely honest with you but I mean it does work so there we go as you can see I've cracked those all off. And then we're going to just use the little snap on 3 8 gun here just to loosen them off. You don't have to get them out. If they do come out, there you go, you can see it is easier, but they will just come out when you pull off the hub with the disc attached. Now, obviously, you're going this far, you're replacing the discs anyway, unless you're just doing a bearing. Lots of beating backwards and forwards, left, right, up, down. Um, and you might be able to create a small gap and get a lever bar in there just to prise it out a little bit. These are notoriously hard to uh, break loose. They're notoriously hard to break loose, as I say. Um, as you can see, I'm using a copper hide hammer here, just beating it backwards and forwards. It eventually starts um, making a bit of space behind there, and you can just get a bar behind it and just lever it off, as you'll see. It should just pop off in a second. There we go. So now this is off, so we use a 13 mil. Um, I'm using it on an impact gun here, um, air-powered impact gun. So you uh, crack all of those, all three, um, all five of those bolts out, as you can see there. Now, these are actually what hold the disc to the hub, which is also the bearing. So again, everything on this van seems to have been really tight. So plenty of beating with a copper hide hammer. Obviously, if you're going this far, you're not keeping the disc. So don't be scared to give it a good whack. Um, try and avoid putting that in a vice if you can because you don't want to start bending the um, face there. And as you can see, that just pops off. And there's the threaded holes that the bolts went through into the disc. So 
here we, as you can see, that's a new bearing that I've put on, and I did that in a separate video. Just going to use a little bit of uh, anti-seize copper slip, whatever your preferred brand is there, just put it on the surfaces, and that really will avoid having to do what I've just spent probably was actually 20 minutes with the cut scene in this video trying to get that disc off. So then all we have to do is get the new disc. So you just line that up so it goes over, then twists, and it lines up with those holes. So you should be able to push it down enough that it stays there. And then you just, there we go, as you can see. I use a screwdriver just to line the holes up perfectly. There you go, it took a couple of times. I'm probably making it a lot difficulter than it actually is. And my camera filming isn't very good here. But yeah, so then all you do is the reverse of what you did, taking it off. So you just wind the bolts back in again. Um, good practice is to use Loctite. I don't because I've had really bad uh, experiences with Loctite. But if you're doing it, you know, for yourself, I would recommend using Loctite. A lot of these discs are almost the lifetime of the van. They don't really tend to wear out too much. They're pretty heavy duty. So uh, this van itself has done about 300,000 miles. So this is probably a second set of discs. There we go. I just buzz them up with the 3 8 gun here. And I'll torque them to spec when they're on the vehicle. And I can just apply the brake pedal to hold that disc still. And make sure you do them down uniformly. Do it in a star pattern as you can see. Not, got, not working my way around going across each time. Apparently I was having a bit of trouble with that socket getting stuck there as well. Okay, so now that's done. Um, as you can see, I cleaned up the face here. So I'll probably, hopefully I'll point out exactly what needs doing here in a second and you'll be able to see. So they're the new capped bolts. They're what hold the hub to it. And that's me applying a little bit of uh, copper slip here, copper ease, whatever you prefer brand, just around here. And this really will stop uh, that problem we had, and you'll probably have as well, of getting this off. Um, there's none applied from the factory because, you know, they don't really want stuff coming off. But this really is essential if you uh, don't want to get stuck spending hours of your life trying to beat that hub off of there. So as you can see, it's in a star pattern, um, and it, is, it doesn't just fit on any way. There's a flat flat side to the star to your left. Um, so you just line it up. Might take you a couple of goes, but it'll be easy to push it on and off. And there we go, getting uh, that's me using my T50 long spline socket there, lining up one of those new bolts, which you can see are already uh, Loctited on. Takes a little, it is a little bit fiddly, but once you get one in and just nip it up, it's pretty straightforward, to be honest with you. There we go. And as I say, there's five of these. You only get new bolts if you're buying a wheel bearing kit. And if I'm being completely honest with you, if you're going to the point of replacing the discs, wheel bearings are only around £30 per side, per front for a decent-ish one. Um, so it's well worth doing. And I've done a separate video on that, and you can see how to do that. So as you can see here, me obscuring the camera nicely. That's me just nipping them all up now. I like to talk these all up once everything's all complete, including the... Uh, stub axle back in the caliper on and I usually work my way around and I'll just torque up the uh, face bolts there for the disc and obviously the uh, wheel bearing hub mounting bolts so now I'm just sliding back through the stub axle um, and I clean this up off camera and put a little bit of anti-seize on there good practice there's the washer this is the new nuts that come oh no that is the old nut sorry I use the old nuts the new nuts that come with the wheel bearing kits aren't that good and they allow the old split pins to rattle around a little bit. So if your nut is in good condition, I tend to use the old one. If there's nothing wrong with it, there's no reason to change it. 36 mil, banging it in with the impact gun here. Now these do go pretty tight, to be honest with you, um, but you'll never be able to get them tight enough as they are. You need to get the old caliper on there and uh, get someone to put your foot on the brake and tighten it up. But as I say, it will always be good practice for you to uh, do 100 miles and go back and check everything and retighten. Um, it's always good practice. So that's new um, nut cover and the new split pin. So I like to flatten those as much as I can. Next will be the caliper carrier, as you can see there. 
and that's the two bolts which should be 18 mils I believe I've already put the new hardware on there as well um, a lot of the pad kits come with this new hardware which are just the metal clips and they they just clip on they're very easy to install um, and they're something I would recommend doing if you don't get them with pads take them off use a wire brush to clean them up because these really do allow your pads to move slow um, nice and smoothly it's just using a set of grips here whatever you want to call them water pump pliers this is just to compress the pistons so there's two pistons per caliper and you can spread that if you can't if you haven't got a big enough set put a spanner across both pistons and compress them with the uh, water pump pliers so i'm using blueprint that's the same as the disc i like to match the discs and the pads as the same make supplying a little bit of copper slip anti-seize just to the edges you don't need to go crazy with this lots of people just paint the whole pad with it you really don't it's just the edges of the pads um, the contact bits that slide on those metal sliders that you can see a little bit fiddly but they slot in quite nicely you don't want to if you have to hammer these in you're doing it wrong um, they need to be nice and uh, free and that's where people sometimes get into a problem there's the new wear sensor wire just connect to that that just pushes in to a hole in the brake pad make sure you know which side it came out of the one that you took off there's the new nuts uh, sorry the new bolt that came with the pads use an impact gun there to be honest with you i i'm very i don't really use um torque wrenches a lot of the time when i'm doing work like this i've done it for years so i'm pretty good at it and i i know what should be at what sort of tightness but obviously if you don't get yourself a torque wrench and there we go so that's the job complete obviously if you ever have any questions please uh do just write them down in the comments i always try to reply all of them thank you